It was reported earlier that the Fulton County, Georgia grand jury issued 10 indictments tonight. Now, what's important for you to understand is that just because there were 10 indictments doesn't mean they all pertain to Donald Trump and the attempt to overturn the election in 2020. Some of them could have been mundane, everyday type of indictments. But there was one indictment that was unsealed, and that was a motherfucking doozy. That particular indictment, that one indictment, has 19 defendants. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, how do you get 19 defendants under one indictment? Well, I got two words for you. RICO Act. Yeah, this is all about racketeering. And when you have RICO charges, it involves a lot of motherfucking people. And this one does. Now, on this list, there's a lot of recognizable names and a few that aren't so recognizable. And there's one suspiciously missing. Yeah, we'll get to that one. But I'm going to give you a list of some of the high points, some of the most well-known names that were indicted tonight. Number one, not surprisingly, Donald John Trump. Yeah, they're getting that motherfucker. Number two, also not a surprise, Rudy Giuliani. We knew that he got a target letter some time back. Next up, John Eastman. He's that lawyer, remember? He was there on January 6th basically the architect of the coup attempt. Yeah, that guy. Next up, and this one's interesting, Mark Meadows. Mark Meadows. We haven't heard much about him as of late. We presume he flipped in the federal case, but apparently not in George's case. He went down there a couple of times to try to coerce people into overturning the election, so he's on the hook. He's on the docket. He's been indicted. Next up, is Kenneth Cheesebro. He's a Wisconsin operative who was also involved in laying out this whole coup attempt. And then there's Jeffrey Clark. Remember that motherfucker? Yeah, he worked in the Attorney General's office under Rosen, I think. And he's the one that came up with the idea that, hey, let's send letters to the swing states saying, all kinds of fraud, stop counting right now. And he was doing such a good job that Donald Trump wanted to make him interim AG. That is, until all the people in the DOJ said, you do that, motherfucker, we're quitting. Then Donald Trump backed off. So Jeffrey Clark is on the hook. Next up, Jenna Ellis. Jenna Ellis, you remember her? She was Trump's spokesperson on TV all the time. Yep, she's on the list. Next up, Ray Stalling Smith, don't know him. Robert Cheeley, Michael A. Roman, a name that's been bandied about in some other cases. Uh, David James Schaefer. And this last one you will know, Sidney Powell. Now, it's interesting, there is one name that is omitted from this list. And I think some of you may be disappointed by it, but wait till you think hear what we think happened. The one name that's been omitted from this that should be on there, Lindsey Graham. We know Lindsey Graham made two calls to Brad Raffensperger, and he was out of line when he fucking did it, but he's not on the list. Why would that be? Man, that's disappointing. Well, there's only one reason he's not on the list, is because that pussy-ass bitch flipped. <laughs> You can see him throw Donald Trump and everybody else under the bus just to save his ass. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out because if he did that, that motherfucker's going to have to testify. He may not get the heat of an indictment, but he is going to get the wrath of the Trump fucks. They are not going to like that motherfucker one bit. So this is what is happening. A lot is happening. We'll no doubt have plenty to talk about tomorrow. So stick with us here. And, of course, I'll be talking about it on the Rational Boomer podcast. You can check that out by going to rationalboomer.com, and there are links to uh, get to the podcast from several different platforms.